Ok, good morning, bom dia. No falo portugués, falo español y en inglés. That's it, that's my, Span uh, my Portuguese. Today we have 30 minutes, give or take, to talk about if you know Oracle database, if you're used to Oracle, if you want to move towards MySQL, or if you're not clear of what things may be happening. Hopefully I can give you some ideas, take that um, fear away, okay? And um, please, this is, I think I'm human, even though I am English, I will try to speak slow, um, so please do not be scared about asking questions or whatever, okay? And if you want to send emails or ask questions afterwards, please feel free, okay? So what are we going to be seeing today? Uh, introduction to the new Oracle DBA. I say new because MySQL is obviously an Oracle database, a relational database. It's the little brother, shall we say, since the Sun acquisition. If you have seen the MySQL presentation, you will have seen this um, disclaimer, okay? Basically it says um, we may be talking about different products, different solutions that are not generally available. They're not uh, in, you know, the, in mainstream uh, MySQL yet. However, um, if I talk about them and then they don't get to that release, then you cannot put this in a contract and you cannot say, MySQL, you should have put that in there. So, in effect, I can lie to you and you can't do anything about it, okay? It's not what I'm going to do, of course, but anyway. So um, this is a long agenda, but it's literally, you know, it's just a quick idea of what we're looking at today. Um, today, well, that's what we'll be seeing. Uh, when should we use one or the other? I can think the colors help you understand what we're talking about there. What assumptions do I leave behind and what things can I bring forward? So similarities and differences. Uh, what's a storage engine if you don't know MySQL? What is it and why do I care? Uh, tooling, monitoring, backups and everything, what, what, you know, what can I do there? Um, what other tools work with MySQL? High availability, um, I have a colleague here, well, there are some colleagues here as well if you have any other questions around MySQL, um, around containers, replica, sorry, um, connectors, about replication and so on. Um, and there is a massive team in Portugal of MySQL developers. So if you have any questions and you're kind of scared maybe talking about in, in English or you just have any questions, feel free to let me know and I will try and direct you, okay? But um, by high availability, it is a key message within MySQL. Um, if you don't know anything about MySQL, uh, replication is the most used feature, okay? And it's so simple to use. But that's another session, okay? See that one later. Uh, what is carrier grade addition? Why do we call that? When would we use it? And what do I need to know about security? Again, something very important these days. So today, maybe we're thinking you, you know Oracle, you know the Oracle database, you, you've been given the opportunity, shall we say, or the challenge to use MySQL. Um, so there's lots of solutions within Oracle. And again, they're both Oracle uh, products, so you know, you've got the two most popular databases on the planet. There are rankings, there are different things about saying, you know, well, if I want to use one, I want to use the other. You know, feel free to, to have a look at that yourself. So we look at the main focus points and similarities and then the tooling, okay? So, if we stop and breathe, it's okay, the classic Oracle DBA and the MySQL DBA. I, I don't think you need any prizes to understand which could be which, okay? Uh, obviously, the MySQL DBA is normally born from the development area, the way that things, you know, you're used to getting your hands dirty. Whereas the Oracle DBA is a bit more of a, you know, so a bit more posh, a bit more, you know, a bit of a, of a broker style, okay? But, um, but it's joking aside, okay? Joking aside. One thing also I need to make clear, okay? MySQL has evolved, it's gone around, it's been come from different versions. And in fact, you can see here, there's 5.1, 5.5, 5.6, 5, 5.7, and 8.0. There have been other versions, but not GA. Uh, I say that because literally uh, two days ago, I had a customer telling me they were using MySQL 6. It's like MySQL 6. MySQL 6 was just after 5.1. We're talking 2010. I guess that's nine years ago. But that was alpha. It didn't get to beta, it didn't get no QA. We got there and it disappeared. But they put this in production. They're using it in production. And it's like, uh, you, can you change that, please? There's lots of versions better than that one afterwards. And he says, it works. That's one of our problems. MySQL just works, okay? But, um, but yeah, so, so there's a big change from 5.1 to 5.5 to 5.6 to 5.7. 8.0, the 
there was massive changes. They were really big changes, data dictionary and you know, internal workings changed from my ISAM internally to, to InnoDB for the system tables. So that's a, why the big change, the step. Now you say, okay, right, five, seven could have gone to six, zero, but you didn't make it GA. But yeah, but there was a MySQL cluster six and a MySQL cluster seven. So we made it eight, okay? So 8011 came out last year, April 2018, and now we're on 8017, 8018 is the next release, okay? So with every new release, we have new features, we're changing our model. Have a look at the latest things, you'd be surprised. Okay, right, okay, that's a quick introduction to MySQL. What about getting it? How do I get hold of MySQL? Well, this obviously you know the community area, you know that you can get it for free, okay? You do a yum install or an apt get install and away you go. But maybe you say, okay, well I want to do this. Um, I want to make sure it's community, so I can go to mysql.com and do downloads. Okay, and you get your open source GPL version too. But then you say, yes, but I also, I want the, the enterprise tools. I want the security options, I want monitoring, I want backup, and I want workbench, but not workbench community. I want to have you know, the, the enterprise. Well, everything you want from enterprise is on edelivery.oracle.com. Username, password, okay, therefore you will have a profile. And you have 30 days, 30, 3, 0, not 1, 3, 30 days to test. And after that, the Oracle police will come to your house and they will say, right, that's it, get out, get out, pay me or get out, okay? You obviously just, you can uninstall and that's it, okay? You don't have to install Enterprise if you have an Enterprise subscription. We will look at that later, and that's where you say, Why am I, what am I paying for? You do not have to install the Enterprise binaries if you already have a MySQL community server installed, and it's working, but you want to do backup and just monitoring. Nobody says you have to install, uninstall anything or change anything. You're not forced to, all right? Make that clear. You want to have a slave in a replication environment Master can be community, and the enterprise can, uh, sorry, the slave can be enterprise. That mix is valid. You obviously will need your two enterprise subscriptions, and therefore we'll talk to the salespeople, but that can be done, okay? So again, mix and match, flexibility, okay? So what is enterprise? Well, we have different versions, different editions. So standard would be, I just want my GPL with support, okay? Enterprise would be, I want everything except the MySQL cluster, and the carrier grade edition is MySQL cluster, the NDB storage engine. Uh, who knows MySQL cluster? Anybody? Excellent. That would be your MySQL cluster community edition, but then you'd obviously have your enterprise solutions for that. MySQL cluster manager, support, geo-replication, whatever. If you are using MySQL embedded, uh, that is within an app, your application. Uh, you sell your application to your customers or your website or you know, your hosting, but you use MySQL underneath and you're making use of that you know, intellectual property, then what we're talking about here is different ways of embedding MySQL in your application. Maybe you just need my ISAM tables and therefore we would be classic. If you want to use it fully as in standard, but just again, just GPL, nothing enterprise and so on, okay? How do I install? Very simple, okay? You have your packages, depending on what operating system you are on. If you're on Windows, you're using your MSI, your, you know, your installers, you use, you're on maybe Ubuntu, you just do your, you know, yum install, uh, apt, sorry, apt get install. But you can also do your TARS, or your unzips, okay? You literally do, you don't have to install anything. But again, it's up to you, completely up to you. The other day, I had a customer who says, I ha I'm using the packages. How can I have different versions or different MySQL installations in my one server? Unzip, change the paths, change the data directories, and away you go. You can have any versions. In my PC, I have version 5, 5, 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 7, 8, 0, and a number of 8, 0s. Advanced, I say commercial editions, or the GPL editions, all in one's place. Different data directories, of course, so it's up to you. So, you know, it's very flexible, and then I'm not even talking about here, you can compile the source code, okay? Take things out and leave it in eight megs if you want to, okay? Or 10 megabytes. You can really strip things out and have it working. What do you want to do? Create a table, insert data, and select. 
And is that, that it? You don't need any errors. You know exactly what it is. You can leave MySQL at eight megabytes. Uh, additionally to that, you say, I want the commercial edition. Well, we have a minimal download MySQL server of 48 megabytes if you want to use that. So again, it's not your, you know, your 300 or your, your 600 megs. It's much, much smaller, depending on what you want to do. So how do I start? I'm not, I don't know. I don't know MySQL. I'm starting to learn. What, what can I do here? Show me quickly how would I get up and running. Well, first of all, we need to, obviously, we've got the software. We've downloaded it. We've installed with, you know, whatever way we've done it. But we need a um, parameter file, mycnf, or if we're on Windows, my.ini. But then you can change that name of the file if you want to. We need data directories to store our data files. Within that, depending on the version, and that's why I've got uh, MySQL 8.0 there. FRMs disappear in 8.0, but if we're using an older version, then we've got our database directories, our FRMs, if we're using my ISAM, my D, my I's, IBD files for the InnoDB files. We need, apart from our data directories, socket, port, user, and a PID file, okay? And that will allow us to start up our instance. Okay, that's the basic, that's configuration. Now let's start or stop. We start here with a system CTL, start MySQL D service. It's a very simple way of starting up, all right? But then you may say, yeah, but I have, remember, I have different installations, different configuration files. MySQL D, defaults file, user, ampersand, all right? I want to shut it down, MySQL admin. If we were in Windows, not the place to talk about Windows, I do understand, but we can have different service names, okay? So don't worry about, oh, I'm in a different environment. And if I want to get in, have a look around, run my SQL, MySQL minus U, here I'm using the root, part, the root user and password, I can configure this in my MyCNF so I don't have to do those, that, those commands written down, I can do it automatically, and then use the killer show tables, and then we're doing SQL now. Please. <laughs> so that's a quick, what is MySQL? Let's move on, all right? One or the other. What do you want, the dolphin or the, or the uh, catamaran? Well, uh, GPL, open source, enterprise edition, you know, it's a, what are we looking to, to use? Um, one, some, maybe one idea, you'd be using specific use cases, or I just want a database, and I want to make sure it does everything. Um, I used to be an Oracle DBA for e-business suite application solutions, and obviously I know, you know what it means to use Oracle as a database. Um, so sometimes you need everything, a bit of everything. But sometimes you know exactly what you want. You just want tables, you just want data. And a number of times I've heard people say, if this was an Oracle version 7 database, it would work exactly the same. Well, then sometimes you may, maybe don't need so much, but you know, that depends on your solution, your application. Um, Again, what's the speed I need to get to market, you know, how fast um, versus my application is what it is. So I have this existing complexity. A web-based SaaS, a cloud, and obviously high-end um, applications, you know, like uh, Siebel or things like this, or SAP, where you, you're using Oracle you know, by default. They're telling you what you need to use. ERPs, HRMS. Again, what budget? When we're talking on one of the databases, normally we're talking licenses, higher costs and everything. Whereas with MySQL, we don't know if we're going to be successful or not. So what do we have to do? And of course then, you know, mix and match, uh, we've got Oracle Data Integrator, Golden Gate for different solutions. We can take data from one into the other or from wherever. So don't, you know, don't worry about that. So. Okay, we've got the basics here of the idea of when to use one of the databases or one of the others or when we can use both. But what's common to both? Well, we've got select, insert, update, and deletes. Obviously, it's SQL. And in MySQL, you have a SQL mode equals Oracle. Now, that's not magic. Okay, there's no special glue. It's just a, a way of being able to write some of your code similar to what you would do with Oracle. Like your concatenations, when you concat and everything is like that with your SQL syntax what makes it easier. But what's, you know, when can we use them both? Sometimes I hear uh, MySQL is for small environments. It's, it's a toy database. It's not professional. Um, so you're saying your environment's bigger than Facebook and you have more than a, a, a thousand a million users in your environment then. Congratulations, congratulations, if MySQL is that small for you. But there are people like Booking who depend on MySQL. PayPal depend on MySQL. 
Google, and what am I going to say? Amazon, you all know that Amazon have their own version of MySQL. They forked it in a different way or shape or form. So yeah, it's, it's, we can do very large databases. Replication, HA, memory preferred. You want to store all your data in memory. Yeah, we can do that, you know, no problem there. Fine tuning with the IO, read and write, thread concurrency, buffers, cache, data types, statements, functions, and a whole lot more. This is just a general introduction, okay? But you want to write JSON in MySQL, go ahead. J uh, JavaScript, Python, no problem. We can do that. We have our locks, rollbacks, redo for the NODB event logging. You know, it's another relational database, okay? Uh, there's one file, very simple to configure. Non-blocking, backups, monitoring, thread pool security, and other features. That phrase there has, like, I could talk all day just about the one line. Um, GUI tools do exist. Some people say MySQL has open source. There are people in garages working on that, and there's no graphical tools there. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. You'll see that in a minute. There are some OCPs and um, paths if you're more into getting certified with your knowledge in the Oracle. Um, the cluster one doesn't exist more, but uh, some people have that still. But the, D the developer or DBA, you can you know, push yourselves or push your bosses to say, you know, we can make this much more professional rather than just another database, okay? And of course, you have or My or My or MySQL Oracle support, it's Oracle. You go to support.oracle.com and you get everything there for MySQL, as well as whatever you're doing with Oracle. And there are a lot of other nice things to have, okay, like dummy mode, making sure that developers don't get more than a million rows in one join, and things like this, okay? This is, you, know, you would see this in Workbench if you're using it. MySQL D, D safe for older versions, your angel process. But what, if I'm using Oracle and I'm coming into MySQL, what things can I forget about or don't exist in MySQL? Control files, listener, none of that. It's just a MySQL D process and our threads. Replication with uh, keeping the same platform. In MySQL, you can replicate from, you know, maybe Ubuntu to Red Hat to Windows to whatever. You can do that, no problem. No limits there. We don't have any pre in prerequisites as such. Uh, the, in the go live time is just literally install. Okay. Here, when we're on Ubuntu, we need to install the libaio1 package, which is kind of like a prerequisite, but that's it. You know, that's, that's basic. Uh, commodity hardware. You can put this on Raspberry Pi if you want to. So no problem there. And it's very, and that's obviously the way cloud is, you know, becoming so much more successful now. We're small, using small environments and bringing that up. Table partitioning versus sharding and terabytes per table in MySQL. If you're talking about partitioning with somebody, that person normally will have come from an Oracle background. Okay, but we can do that as well. We have partitions and subpartitions, so you know, it's always good. Dot, 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 certified and supported platforms, our enterprise versions, they obviously are certified and tested, and so when we support them, say, yep, well, this is a list of the ones we have here, so, you know, you're safe there. If you want to use from Dual, you can, you don't have to, select SysState, and away you go. We have different levels of char sets, not just within the, the whole the instance, but, you know, within, we can have columns with a different char set, character set, so I guess that can be something positive there. <laughs> In MySQL, a user, is not a schema, okay? Leave that behind. In Oracle, that's where Scott Tiger and the Scott schema would exist. In MySQL, you have your user accounts, and in MySQL, you have your databases or your schemas. Two separate things. Lots of table spaces, that's an Oracle thing. We can do that more now in MySQL if you want to, locating and making use of your maybe your SSDs or your hard disks, uh, being more cyclical, depending on the type of usage you're doing within your application and your queries. But um, yeah, we can do table spaces but it's not so much a big thing in MySQL. And there's a link there. I hopefully think you'll be getting this presentation afterwards, uh, but that link at the bottom that says technical comparison is um, when you're using um, SQL Developer, you have a comparison of the data types between Oracle and MySQL. That's Oracle documentation. So, after all of that, which goal is the best one? Different things, different moments in time. One goal was the winner of the you know, World Cup. However, you can't tell the boy there he's just scored his first goal in a championship match, you know, that his is a lesser goal. Okay, so different things with different moments. But, you know, both do the, both scored a goal. Okay, different ways of working. Um, but what's key about MySQL? What's the major thing? The storage engine, okay? Having storage engines. That's the big difference, okay? 
being able to store the table in a different format therefore determines what optimization, the queries are going to go running into that, and therefore how we use the, the MySQL server. All right? Uh, performance concurrency and locking, obviously, that depends on what we're doing here, you know, how we're going to interact with our data, different rows within the table. The processing model, the upper tier, the MySQL D passes, optimizes, and the lower tier is obviously if I'm using a memory storage engine. We'll see the different types of storage engines in the next slide, but the memory in ODB, my ISM, that determines how we will work, okay? How efficient we will be or not efficient. The end user, the developer doesn't matter, they don't care about it. And, um, but what, what is storage engine? Well, obviously, the storage, where we're storing it on disk, how we're storing it, if it is in disk or whatever. We could have the CSV storage engine, uh, using it as an ETL part to get our data into memory storage engine and so on. Uh, transactional locking, backup and recovery, depending on what way we store our data, we do different backup methodologies. Optimization and special features. Special features, again, in ODB is getting more of these special features. In fact, it has a majority of them now. Um, but then you maybe want to use uh, memory for one thing, or the older, not so frequently updated storage engines now, like federated. Maybe we want to create tables that are connecting to other instances. Not, some, not hardly used at all now. But these are some of the, this, some of the storage engines. In ODB, it's the default one from 555 onwards. Um, for all the tables, and now from 8.0, it's the storage engine to use. One of the key points there is for um, the InnoDB cluster. Anyone using InnoDB cluster here or heard of it? Well, that's like, um, we need InnoDB tables. <coughs> Hence the name, okay, InnoDB cluster, InnoDB tables. And therefore, we know my ISAM or anything else was not useful for us. Um, my ISM was the default when we had our web pages, our web, you know, our blogs. We're writing at the end. We're doing a few inserts, but the majority was reads. So that's when my ISM was good. Uh, memory, it's not on disk. We shut the instance down, we bring it up, nothing there, because it was in memory. However, if we have a MySQL usage to be able to provision our data when we start up our instance, because it may be a static data, or maybe it's data we're pulling out of a CSV file or a flat files, and we want to provision that and then use that as a master or as a part of replication, then we may want to use memory. And I have different customers are using that in ETL processes or you know, temporary files, and instead of creating temporary tables, sorry. Then there's NDB. Now, that is a storage engine apart, and when you want to talk to NDB, send me an email. It's much easier because that's a different architecture, different software, different way of working. I would even say it's not MySQL. Okay, it's MySQL cluster, so you know, let me know. Then we have CSV. No prizes again there, guessing what that means. Black hole. Anyone use black hole? Tiago, don't answer. <laughs> black hole is um, we write the data to dev null, which makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Okay, no, it doesn't. But why would we write data to somewhere that's going to disappear? Because we're using the logs, and we're using the replication scenario. And then we can pull these logs, make sure we replicate instead of the 100 columns to, and then we can even you know, concatenate those two columns or even add columns in our replication slave. Example, maybe you want to create your own storage engine, archive for archiving, merging, merging, and merge my, uh, my ISM for when we was using uh, my ISM tables. Okay, well that, that's the storage engines. We've seen how to install, how to configure. What about tools? Give me something that's got eye candy in it that works and, you know, it's, okay, maybe it's different ways of doing things. Got the enterprise monitor, okay? Obviously comes with the enterprise subscription. Monitoring everything in your MySQL environment. The server, the graph, the topologies, get your events, your alerts, even SMP traps to forward on to your Nargis or your Zabbix or whatever. But we've got query analyzer. What's happening within my server? I want to know the performance of my queries, and I want to see the historic of one single qu query there. What has happened in the last year of that single query? Query, query analyzer will give you that. Full table scans, the problems with your indexes. I want to see my replication setup. It's there. It'll automatically detect it for you. Event scheduling and the monitoring, obviously, you know, of the whole environment. Security, users, you know, caches. I can look into my cache and see what's happening. Enterprise backup, pop backups online, uh, full, incremental, optimistic, uh, partial recoveries, partial restores, um, copying, cloning environments and everything. Enterprise backup is so easy. You're probably using MySQL dump, and it'll take a long time. Uh, I think I've got it here. 
Now, I've got an, uh, if, if you come to the session later, I'll show you an example scenario, but there's a big difference with the backups there. What else have I have, do I have? Warning, if you come from the Oracle arena, we don't have packs. There's no tuning, configuration, change management, things like that, diagnostics pack. Enterprise edition, it's all there. Okay? And then we have different utilities and use command line interfaces. You can see at the bottom here, MySQL, obviously, to run MySQL, MySQL admin. Uh, shut down, MySQL check, analyze, blah, blah, blah. There's so many different utilities to help you do different things with your MySQL instance. What else, what other tools have we got? MySQL Workbench. If you've used the MySQL, Insta, uh, MySQL Server community, you've probably used the Workbench, community version of Workbench, okay? Which means we've got server user and object administration. We can reverse engineer our data model so I can convert it into SQL files and then push that to another environment or vice versa. Mix and match. Uh, utilities like migrating from different, you know, um, data migrating from one MySQL, an older version to a newer version, different release to another one, or even from Sybase to Postgres, whatever. You know, migrate off, that, off of that older database and put it on a MySQL if you want to. Uh, failovers, different utilities there. Disk free cloning there. There's a special thing, um, not sure if we'll talk about it later, but about MySQL clone, that's um, the latest version. And that's Workbench, the GPL. Then you have the commercial edition, where we have obviously all the um, graphical user interfaces for auditing, for backup, for firewall, okay? You've got that in there as well. If you want to use um, Oracle Virtual Machine, Oracle Linux, K-Splice, and things like that, again, you know, that's available, as well as obviously, like we said before, ODI, Oracle Data Integrator, and Golden Gate. So, now we've been at work all day long, wonderful, let's have some rest and carry on using the computer. Sometimes if you chill out, it's not bad. What about security? Just I'm finishing up here, not long now. So in older versions, when it was pre-5.7, okay, 5.6 and earlier, I could create a user by saying, grant all on everything in this, and all of the schemas to this user with that password. And that would create a user. We changed that in 5.7 because it's not very safe. We want you to be very careful, control your security. So there's, um, as before, the MySQL secure installation script was what was you'd be using up until now. That's all implicit in 5.7 upwards. You don't have to do that because you're making sure you're going to be safe. In addition, we've got ourselves keys and certificates. Okay, we can parameterize that however you want. Enterprise security, again, you know, plug pluggable authentication modules, external authentication, Active Directory if you're on Windows. You know, mix and match there, you know, different LDAPs the way you want to, external authentication, or even two uh, multi-phase authentication as well. Uh, secure backup if you're using Oracle Secure Backup. Um, within the Enterprise Monitor, what we call MEM, MySQL Enterprise Monitor, you know, all the advisors, all the warnings about what's happening within my you know, users here. Maybe, and there's a lot more things that we could talk about security, about GDPR, for example. So if you want to talk more about that, just let us know. High availability, we touched on it, as in replication, but there's so much more. You'll see more with uh, the session later within replication, but just quickly, we talk about nines, five nines, two nines, three nines. Um, you got, uh, I won't do, destroy your <laughs> presentation too much, but uh, uh, asynchronous is default, but we can do semi-synchronous. Um, it's not like Oracle replication, okay? It's not like that. It's not um, snapshots and materialized views. This is, you know, we're using our bin logs and the rel relay logs, okay? We can have uh, MySQL in clustered environments. We have active-passive. So maybe you've got you know, a failover you're using. You, you're not, you don't like the MySQL replication so much. Different people like prefer to use the operating system options, you know, like um, Keep Alive D or whatever. So you know, active-passive, DRBD, for example, Oracle Linux, Pacemaker. Maybe you've got shared disk. So it's on the same disk. One environment shuts it down, the other brings it up. That's a, another way. Um, replication and old, the old utilities that you know, nobody uses so much anymore. Um, we have the replication advisors in the Enterprise Monitor to make sure we're checking to make sure there's no lags, no you know, issues there. EnoDB cluster, if, you, if MySQL replication is not quite there, you need something more, look to EnoDB cluster. And like we said, um, cl MySQL cluster, NDB, shared nothing. That is, like I said, that's another story. We will talk about that quickly later. Um, just a quick word on the InnoDB cluster. I won't go into this too much. I'm running out of time, so please let me know. I'm okay, though. Um, InnoDB cluster is three things. It's the group replication comes with every version of MySQL server, okay, from 5.7 upwards. So it's there, even if you didn't turn it on. 
MySQL router and MySQL shell are just two more components that help us create an InnoDB cluster that's transparent and seamless to our application. Shell to configure it, and router is the, the kind of like a proxy interface that says, I know, I'm intelligent enough to know who's the master, who are the slaves, where do I read, where do I write? What ports you want to do, how do you want to write, I'll give that to you. So your application doesn't worry about it. It's all MySQL, it's all ours, tested together, packaged together. We use Shell to obviously configure and um, homogeneous services. It's, and, the, and the thing about Shell is it's SQL, and without reconnecting, it's no SQL. Two separate things in the same component, okay? So we're writing in JavaScript or Python and SQL within our same session, okay? Now get rid of all your Mongos, okay? Because that, with our document store, you're, you're sorted. Uh, we've got support, read up, write, scale out. We've got sharded clusters, depending on how you want to do things and everything. We can shard the data in a readout, read-only mode there. So, you know, we're separating out different layers, um, end replicator sets and so on. This is the shell. Very simple to use, MySQL SH, connect in and uh, away we go. Similar to MySQL. There's some good utility in MySQL shell. Well, there's lots of good utilities, of course, but there's two key ones. One is a MySQL clone. I want to clone my environment, okay? So therefore, I can you know, provision this environment. Well, it's a plugin, but obviously when we use it, um, we're creating our InnoDB cluster. We add our instance and it says, ah, oh, this instance has no data. I'll go and get that and I'll copy the clone, the master environment, and I'll provision that for you on that IP that you've given me. So you say, sorted, it's all done. No backups, no exports, imports, it's automatically given to you. And then there's, I'm upgrading. I want to check my upgrade. Well, MySQL Shell gives you that utility to check server upgrade, it says, my 5.7, I'm going to 8. What's the issues here? Really big, long list. Make sure that everything goes done safely. And that's just two. Okay? Uh, what else? The router, like I say, it's kind of, you know, it's got the intelligence behind our cluster. So we know who's the master, who's the slave, where can we go, and what happens when the, when the members change. If I have a three node, five node, seven node, split node, split brain scenario, it'll take us to the majority of the nodes there. It's virtually synchronous, okay? We have two layers of communication within our, in, our group replication. Um, and that what makes it aggressive in that sense, makes it you know, very, very uh, aware in what data is going where, to what nodes. And therefore, the consistency, again, we can choose that consistency we want to. We can configure it to make sure that maybe eventual, which is the default to, um, consistency, we want to have different layers. We've got different, five different options there. So we can choose. We can be very aggressive. But that's just the default. And we can have multi-master updates as well. So we can have all nodes uh, writing everywhere. And again, depending on our transaction or our global consistency, we can configure and choose. It's a lot of information, I know. Very quick, we're running out of time. We've got all this. I need to talk about this one second here. NDB. And now for something completely different. Maybe you don't all like Monty Python, but it's, this is a different type of architecture. I was reading this one time and I kind of, this, this made me think about NDB. Um, MySQL cluster is not MySQL server. It's not MySQL really. It has a MySQL server within it, but it's more than that. So for different things, I use different tools. I like the saying there from, from Gandhi, okay? What would I use it? It's, it's carrier grade. It's, it was born out of Ericsson, one of the sub companies. MySQL bought that company, got the software. It's MySQL cluster. It's thought for the world of telcos, but it's using online gaming, it's using you know, payments, uh, backends, you know, even caching systems, it's, it's in memory database. Really, some people say the name should not be MySQL cluster, it should be MySQL real time or MySQL in memory. So if you ever think of things like that within your MySQL environment or any databases, I would like an in memory database. Highly available, because it has data redundancy, okay? Data, at least two copies of the data. And with the different versions, we're getting more copies. We're looking at giving up to four copies here. Um, it's, it's not MySQL in a cluster, okay? There's no failover here. Don't think about failovers. The HA is measured in nine. We have customers uh, who go for five nines and get six nines with geo replication. And that's real. That's to their customers, okay? Um, it's shared nothing. It's, as in data node replicas, we'll see that in a minute. Self-healing, it will try and heal itself. 
And we have uh, the cluster manager arbitrators that help us obviously detect what happened when one of the servers has gone down, one of the nodes isn't there. All of that is automatic, and they, they tell each other what's happening. So we can configure that one. The upgrades are online. That means that we stop one of the components, upgrade it to a newer version, and do that all across our different layers. And when we've finished, then we use the new features. But it's all online, okay? We can use memcached uh, through the NDB API and all the other different connectors we want to. There's so many different options available, like JavaScript or Apache or Cluster J or whatever. Um, and, and for fine tuning, cluster, remember, this is a telco environment, okay? Uh, or, or you was born out of a telco environment with NDB. So of our threads, when we want to start them up and we want to make sure they're being finely tuned, we can assign them to a spe specific core or group of cores, depending on what we're doing, depending on activity. That makes it very, very finely optimized in that sense, okay? The tuning is, you know, deep down. So we can go very far with NDB. Simple, isn't it? Okay, this is taken out of the manual, all right? So, whereas before, up on here, oh, let me do it on here, actually. Maybe it's easy this way. You can see the SQL node. This was our classic MySQL server. Now it's just part of the architecture. Under here is where we have what we call our data nodes. That's the memory in, so the data in memory. That's the key thing here now. There's no, we don't have our IBD, NODB data files here. Under, now it's NDB, and all the data is down here, in memory on the four servers in this case, or four nodes. We have our clients or connectors or whatever up here, but again, we're having sessions that are connecting straight into the data. We don't have to have SQL here. In this architecture, you can have one SQL node and you can have 48 data nodes because you have 160 uh, C programs that are going straight into the data. You don't really need SQL anymore, not in here. But this was out no SQL before no SQL it came no SQL, but it's just data and connectivity. We have groups that obviously gives us the high availability. And so if that's, there's people here arriving, I think that's for the next session maybe. I'm overrunning, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> shall we continue quickly? So let's have a look at it. What's, what, if we've installed in the, everything, we're going to create our table. Let's make a quick way of seeing what's, what's happened here. You've got four data nodes, four IPs, four servers, and we have our table and our data. So we have four partitions. A partition is a portion of a table, number of partitions, number of data nodes. Horizontal partitioning, simple. But we have our copies, because obviously we want to be high availability. So we'll have two copies of our four fragments, okay? So F1 goes to one, and it goes to two. F3 will go to two, and there. I think you can see the pattern here, maybe. Is that quite clear? So we have our original copy, Oh, so original data and a copy shared it between two servers. What happens if I lose data node one? Nothing. No problem whatsoever. I still have a full copy of the data here. There's my mouse. Here he is. Okay, it's all there. What happens if I lose data node one and four? I've lost half of my architecture now. No problem. There's no failover. But all of it's still here. I've got a full copy of data here. What happens if I look... Oh, sorry. I've gone too fast. If I've data node four comes back on, but then I lose data node three, no, no problem. I've still got four, no, four, full copy. But if I lose data node one and two, half of my architecture, my whole group has gone down. I don't have that data. I'm, I'm I shut down. Okay. So that was the key concepts of NDB cluster. There's a lot of new things in the latest versions. You can do different ways in that, but that's just a quick idea of what is NDB. We don't have time for me to ask these questions, but um, so, do you have any questions? Any doubts? Any queries? If you want to know more, mysql.com or devmysql.com for the uh, documentation. An e-delivery and does does this still require that we that we use the MDB engine on all tables? If it's in clusters, it does, yeah. Okay. You can obviously have InnoDB locally at the MySQL, yeah, but, I, and you'd have to create your procedure to take yeah, the data you, out you of You need that. to base the, the software on this, on this engine. Yes. Right. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. okay, okay, okay. If you don't want to do MySQL cluster, you can do InnoDB cluster, but then that's a different architecture, different solution. Okay. You can have a, a master in NDB cluster, and then have slaves in InnoDB, okay. and do analytical things there. NDB is not for everything. It's yeah, not a yes. magic solution. Okay, I will say that first. Um, sometimes, I, a lot of the times, 
And in fact, the majority of times, I scare people into not using NDB. <laughs> say, think what you're doing first. Make sure you know where you're going. And I've had customers say, no, we want to use NDB. I said, no, you don't. You want to use InnoDB cluster? And they say, really? I said, well, you tell me. Here's an, there is an evaluation guide that de describes technically what you can and can't do with InnoDB. Sorry, NDB. So NDB. Read it. Talk to me about it. We will go through it. And I will tell you, you can't do a full table scan on your one terabyte table in NDB. But you'll be going across four data nodes. It'll be easier in InnoDB. You yeah. go into one node, in and out. But if we go to four nodes, you go one here, hang on, hang on, hang on. I will push that back. You'll be slower. There are new features in, in, in NDB 7.6 now that depending on what you're doing, if you need to go to half of them, you can do the read backup. So if we have the copy here, you can say, I, on older versions, I would have gone to the other copy here, but I don't have to now. I can stay on my local server, and that can act as a, in fact, it will be quicker than InnoDB. Why? Because it's in memory, and it's on the same server. Now, that could be a good use, but again, we'd have to look at the queries, look at that, and say, test it first. Don't jump into that one. But I, I'm the first one to say, NDB, let's have a chat about this one. You know, let, let's sit down and be calm, all right? But yeah, thank you. You want to go to NDB? Make sure. You're in an ODB? Let's have a look. Weigh them up. Weigh them up. Thank you. Any more questions? Anybody? Three, two, one. No, I'm kidding. Well, don't worry. I've got another session later. If you want to have a talk in between, feel free. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.